Hello everyone, welcome to Risk Connect, connecting you with the art of data visualization and storytelling. My name is Sagar Kapoor. I'm part of customer success team at Tableau. Risk Connect is your weekly Tableau community, which helps you to get inspired, get motivated, and participate in Tableau community initiatives. Learn from the Tableau champions, Zen masters, ambassadors, featured author, how you can go ahead and improve, improve your craft in Tableau data visualization and storytelling. All the sessions which are presented in this connect are posted to a YouTube channel. Go ahead, subscribe to it. Some great content is waiting for you. We have a LinkedIn group. Go ahead, connect with each other, learn from each other. All the content information about this connect is posted in our uh, LinkedIn group. So go ahead and join the awesome uh, data fam, which we already have it over there. With that, just to give a shout out again, Tableau conference is coming. It will be from 9th to 11th of November. Depends on whichever region you are. If you are in EMEA and APAC, it will be from 10 to 12. So go ahead, get registered yourself. It, it is free again and virtual this year. A lot of great content will be there for you to go ahead and attend. With that, let me go ahead and talk about our speaker today. Uh, Chimdi is a three time Viz of the Day author. He was six in Iron Viz 2021 finalist, Tableau Public Ambassador, former Tableau Pub featured author, and he's committed to inspiring outside the box thinking when using data visualization to communicate insights. He believes that focusing on design in every minor detail within our visualization is a proven way to increase the impact we have to make on our views and audiences. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Chimdi to talk about unlocking layers of conversation and how he built the Sunny Street conversation base in Tableau Public. So Chimdi, over to you. Thank you, Cigar. Appreciate it. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for having me here. I'm just going to quickly share my screen so that we can get going on this. Awesome. So, as Sagar mentioned today, we'll be talking about unlocking layers in Tableau, which is essentially just using the map layer functionality. And in order to demonstrate that, I'll be talking about how I went about building this viz. Um, I'm going to try to talk a little bit about myself here before we start, just so you can get a bit get to know a bit about me. Um, I currently work in um, healthcare uh, as a health informatics lead, and I've I've done some work in a bunch of previous industries. Um, I've done sales. I've been a sales trainer. Um, I've worked in finance. I've uh, been a business analyst, a technical analyst. So, you know, just lots of curiosities and you know industries and lots of experiences there. So that's great. Um, in terms of this whole database thing, you know, I consider myself like a database addict, really, because how how I feel when I'm doing this is 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 just a really great, refreshing feeling, and just being able to like communicate insights and explore different ways of engaging users is just really my thing. Um, Makeover Monday, I guess, it's now. You know, on a hiatus, but it's definitely something that really helped, you know, spur that desire, just, you know, being consistent and doing all of that. Um, I wrote here aim to visualize beauty regardless of subject. So if I can dig into what that means for you, it's, it's basically, I, I mean that regardless of the subject, you know, whether it's like negative, like positive, you know, like gloomy or not gloomy, um, I will always try to present it in a way that is, is visually appealing, um, somewhat attractive that way, you know, for example, if you're like thinking about, you know, like a negative subject, rather than getting boggled down with negative emotions, you know, you can balance that out by giving you something visually like appealing to look into. So that's, that's what I mean by that. Let me switch slides here. Um, I like to, or at least I try 
to be equal parts technical and, and design. Um, I find like lots and so many great people uh, are really good at, you know, getting into the analysis, you know, getting into data slicing and dicing, and that's really fantastic. And so I try my best to inspire by saying, okay, well, we have that and, and how can we also use design to enhance the, 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 that part of our data communication? So there's that. Um, I written here that I've reframed perpetual overthinking for a useful purpose, just because that's something that really characterizes me is like, I, I live a lot in here. And, you know, as it relates to data biz, I'm sure a lot of people here have been in a situation where it's like, you're, you're trying to get something down and then you're trying to decide, like, what if I did this? What if I did that? What if I do this? What if, and you just kind of get stuck. And, you know, from my personal experience, I find sometimes like, that just means the viz is not going to get posted. It's not going to get finished because I guess paralysis by analysis, right? You just can't move forward. And so, you know, one thing that I found and how this applies to data viz is that upfront initially, you know, if I'm able to just generate all the set of what ifs, 20, 30, 40, and then just sort of layer them out together, we can just sort through them initially and then discard and then move forward rather than, you know, sequentially just like looking here and then coming and then jumping all around the place. And, you know, I, I, there's a, little, a bit more to say about that at a different point, but that's just kind of what that is. Um, and finally, I'm a ex ginger molasses cookie monster. Uh, I went through a, a period of my life where <laughs> like I would have this for breakfast with like, you know, tea and coffee, whatever it is. And then I will go ahead and have that for lunch as well with like juice or whatever. And then I would have dinner and then have some more cookies, you know, but of course you can't really live like that. Like, you know, it's a lot of sugar. So now I don't, I don't really buy sugar. I don't do any of that stuff, but I just found that's just a funny thing about me that maybe you might want to know just since, um, I'm not really fond of talking about myself. So I figured maybe my, now might be a good opportunity to put a few tidbits out there. So now jumping into the you know main subject of today again thank you for joining whoever is here i hope we can add some value today we're going to be going over a few things um with the viz that we're talking about today i'm going to first run through everything from start to finish and sort of highlight this was done in tableau this is not done in tableau just to really give you an idea of if you do want to create something like that, then this is realistically what you're going to have to get into to achieve that. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the design choice. Um, it was really intentional. Um, I, I noticed a lot of people went the route of analysis and just like digging deep, which is great. And, and I think there's a, there was a lot of value there. And so I decided to go a little bit more conceptual and, and, and I'll share with you how I thought about presenting what I presented and hopefully it can give you a bit of an idea of some of the things that run through my mind, you know, with data viz and if it helps you as you do your thing, fantastic. Uh, we'll touch on the components, everything that sort of had to come together to make that viz happen. And then we're going to start getting a little bit technical. We're going to go through all the layers, how they were set up, the circle, the stem, the flowers, the bands, the symbols. And then we're going to jump into the shapes, Adobe Illustrator, which was a huge component, like a huge factor, like a tool used here. And then, you know, we'll talk about just generally speaking for the map layers, ideas around how to think of creating a grid. And of course, using the make point calculations, which are essentially the building blocks of how we're, you know, developing these things. And so these are all the slides that I've got for today. Um, I'm going to jump into the viz and then we can start to, to break it down a little bit here. So I'm just going to switch my screen. Okay. So, um, can you please, uh, indicate whether you can see the viz or not? Yes, Jim, we can yeah. see all this. Please go ahead. Perfect. Thank you. So actually, maybe I should look at it in Tableau Public and then we'll jump into. I'll look at it online and then we'll come back here.
All right. So this is the viz here. Um, really, I, I was I was really excited doing this because a lot of it just kind of happened based on exploration. Um, there are a few people that have already spoken about map layers. So I, before I jump into this, I would recommend the, the session by CJ. Um, was there CJ Mays, uh, you know, huge, 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 huge inspiration. Um, he talks a bit about this. He goes into some of his own methodologies and thoughts around that. I would also say uh, Jyoti Gautam, I, forgive me if I didn't say that properly, but she also has, um, you know, used this in a really nice way for, for a Pokemon Viz. She has a, a post on it. So they're both on Twitter. Um, please go check them out. Definitely a lot of good foundational stuff in terms of, you know, map layers. I'm essentially just building upon some of that good stuff and and showing how um, perhaps I've tried to dig a little deeper to do something like this. So I'll just scroll down. This is the overall viz here. This is it. Now let's begin to uh, dig in. We essentially have over here, this is just a summary. This is all, actually, let me, let me do a different approach here. I'm gonna go here. So I'll just show you, first of all, this is, these are everything. This is what we have to do here. So the layout is Illustrator. These are all created in Illustrator. And of course, it's all put together. So just bearing this in mind, um, I guess let's jump back to the this. So over here, I just sort of laid out, um, I said to myself, how, how can I, do this in such a way where I can keep a consistent um, perspective or a, 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 a consistent view of the visual because you know you can do like a bar chart and then line charts and you're kind of having to utilize different visuals. But for the style that I wanted to do, you know, it was like how can I come up with something that I can use to represent everything, even though they're different, you know, things. So we have a legend which just now uses symbols to differentiate between, you know, conversations, consultation, and program metrics. And the general idea is just using the flowers to communicate the activity of Sunny Street. So, you know, looking at the legend, basically we have these little circles that are talking about the total um, conversations or consultations for the period. And then, you know, 2019, 2020, uh, 2021, that just kind of shows the overall um, trend over time, wherein with the size, you can see that, you know, for example, in the patient conversations, like you have a, a flower here, 17, eight, 1780, it gets bigger, telling you that, okay, there's been growth for 2020, and then it gets a little bit smaller, letting you that, okay, it's gone a little bit down in um, 2021. So even though it's not like, you know, a line chart, there's still that way to communicate like the trend of, of what happened there. So this layout is all Tableau, but as you will have guessed, the shapes are not Tableau, they're Illustrator. And we'll go into how this was brought into Tableau. This just kind of covers the regional areas of where Sunny Street has operated. Again, using the same philosophy to say, we're going to use these flowers. How can we communicate? So essentially, we're just switching the numbers around to represent the activity at the regional level. And then for the impact, we kind of switched it around where these are just, you know, tableau, um, I guess, rows. And then we have it's like a bin spread out histogram kind of thing of the age. These are just shapes, again, brought into tableau. Shapes, 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 but these are just literally tableau layouts that were just kind of creatively pulling um, the shapes in and using those to display what we want to display. So I'll, I'll kind of jump into it now in actual tableau so we can begin to like unpack what we're actually looking at overall. Um, let's start with this. The main view. So over here with this grid, 
how I think about map layers is if you can think about a way to generate points for whatever you want to show, then you're basically already covered half of the battle. <clears throat> so, for example, for this, the program is over here. Um, the starting point was basically this, like the small multiples calculation. And, you know, what I did here is essentially just created this and then did the layout. So this calculation is, is I have it saved in a Word document. I grabbed it from Andy Kribal. I, I, I don't believe you necessarily have to like memorize um, calculations if you don't have to. If you feel like doing that, you can. I just personally don't do that. So, you know, you have the calculations there. And what I've done is you can either do like a five by three or a three by five. And to test that in the calculations, we're basically just going, if I go edit, right? That's just, this is the standard calculation for like small multiples. But, you know, I'm using this parameter over here, for example, um, to, to test out what the view is like. And I'll show you what that does. Like, if we go edit, Right, I have it set to current value five, which means it's going to try to build the view with like five things in the column there. If I switch this, for example, to like three, then I can see what it's like in the opposite way. Um, where is so you can see basically like. If we want it to go like three by five, then we can kind of see, okay, what's better for our view? What's an easier way to show? Um, and for me personally, I just thought that the five by three was a better look when I did the three by five, it really just took up way too much space. It wasn't productive. So that's just something I guess you can try for that. So I'm just gonna, you know, leave that as is there. And so I sorted it accordingly just so that Actually, let me let me put that back so we're not confused. So so that's something that you know this work it's all prep stuff to before we actually start you know building the layer. So the point that I'm trying to um, show you is that for doing stuff like this, you really honestly you need a, a lot of patience to really experiment with what you want to do before you can actually start to build like the layout, you know, using map layers, because map layers are a little bit different where with these kind of stuff, you can kind of play around a little bit, but with the layout for maps is like, once you start putting it together, it's really not convenient to start altering things. You know, you can fine tune them, but you have to kind of have a general idea first. And so, you know, as part of that, we decided to like sort this in a way where it's just logical because for viewing and things like that, you know, you can get to see what's the most, what's the least, et cetera, et cetera. So now that we have this base layout, then I actually now took control of it in a different way to say, okay, let's go back here. All right. So, so we have this view here um, and, and it's built based off of, these here rows and columns and so you know these would be our columns these would be our rows so for the columns for example what we did was in order to be able to have more control in terms of moving things around because again with the make point we're just building a grid so we're just moving up down left right that's that's really how you got to think about it is you know your columns or like let's say longitude and latitude zero zero and so you can go upwards, you can go downwards, you can go left, you can go right. That's really what came to play in this viz. So if we go for the columns and we try to edit that, I just said, okay, if the dim is equals is in patient conversations, referrals, allied health, then zero. So that gives us um, these three over here. And the reason why I know this is because I did that over here. And so I'm just using this, right? If in conversations, health education, right? It's now another one. So we're just using that to build um, the columns. I mean, the, uh, 
and thing with pros if we go edit conversations mental health service provider etc etc cetera, et cetera. this one essentially we had to do a little bit of customization so for Sorry, one second. Okay. Um, these names here are the actual names in the data set. These names are aliases, just to shorten them. So just keep that in mind as we're talking here. Um, but what I've done for this in the rows is you see this is all lined up together, but in the actual viz, it's not lined up together because the patient conversations were just significantly more than everything else. And so I just thought that I had to shift it a little bit out to make sure that the visual is still balanced. And so for that, what happened is patient conversations, it basically has its own row, right? I said, put that at row 0 0.1, which is essentially, if we remember that we're at 0, 0, patient conversation 0 then goes a little bit higher. And then if it's in length of hours, referrals, et cetera, et cetera, 1.2, that's just these rows over here, right? So, you know, you can go zero, you can go one, you can go two, but again, that's why I kind of said, I would much rather build it like this so that I can adjust things and fine tune as we go. And so that's one thing you can keep in mind is, you know, if you build out the grid this way, it's fine, but if you want to just stick with like a standard grid, like let's say you use this multiple cap, small multiple cap calculation to develop that, then you're just going to have to deal with whatever placement comes with that. You're going to have to deal with whatever disproportion comes from the sizes. And personally, I don't like that. Personally, I feel that I don't want people to struggle when they're looking. I will try to give as even spacing as possible, try to make things consistent. And that's why. I say you need patience because once you do the initial layout, then you're going to have to do a bunch of the fine tuning after the fact. And that's really something that, you know, we may not like to do it for ourselves, but we're helping the viewer. We're making it easier for them to view this stuff. And if you're going for this style, I think, you know, it just makes sense to create a visual balance as best as possible. So that's kind of how the roles were laid out for this particular piece there. Um, I'm hope, I hope that I'm explaining this as well as I can. Um, you're going to have to forgive me if this doesn't make sense. Please ask me questions. I'm still very new to communicating like my process and things like that. So, um, moving into the regional areas, I guess this is a bit easier to lay out. This, the layout is in Tableau. So in terms of how the layout for this was built, I just created a calculation by saying, okay, I have these locations. How can we assign numbers, right? Because we can't build a grid based on the road, uh, the, the, the words. So for the program here, it's based on this calculation. I'll show it here. It's basically using a simple if statement to assign numbers based on this. So if the program is Fraser, one, if it's Gold Coast, two, if it's Sunshine, three, and then for creating the map layers, then we can just say here, make point zero, and then program, where this program is now essentially just each of these here. And then this minus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.25, again, that just comes from moving the columns a little bit off to the right, just to kind of create an even spacing. So that's 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 really something that i think it involves a lot of playing around with it involves a lot of you know experimentation because you're not going to get it right the first time and um if this stuff isn't really sticking too well i have promised myself that i'm going to write a blog about it like a more detailed explanation once i think about a better way to explain it but that's really how you got to think about it is if you can assign numbers to any dimension that you want to show, then you can essentially use the make points to create a grid for literally anything. 
And there's different ways that you can create a grid. Um, this is just one way that I use. Uh, a creative way that I've actually seen someone else do is that they would go make points and then they would just grab two measures that are available in the data set. And you will find that it still has a specific order within the data because those dimensions are, are linked to those measures. If that doesn't make sense, ignore me. But basically, that's how I do it. I use the make point and then I assign numbers to whatever dimensions that I want to show. Um, for this one, this is just essentially over here. It's a. Uh, I'll have to take this away. One second. It's just a simple, right? Text, literally just that. We develop the calculations that we want to show. So the number of patients, the age, et cetera, et cetera. And we just lay it out using the, you know, labels to create all of that there. So, um, this is not complicated. It's just something, I guess, creatively, I figured do it this way. And then here is also just same thing. We're just building a view and then, you know, using the shapes to there, just like that. So that, that's really one of the things that I just thought that, you know, create some consistency in such a way that wherever you're seeing 2019 values, you know, whenever you see a pink flower, you know, it's 2019, wherever you see a, a blue flower, you know, it's representative of 2020, wherever you see a yellow flower, you know, that's representative of 2021. And like the concepts around this, I learned from Frederica Fragapan. I don't know if I said that name correctly, but she's got this really great course on visualizing, uh, visualizing, I forgot what it's called, but the whole idea is that she calls this a visual alphabet. <clears throat> And the concept is that you can literally show anything you want to show, however you want to show it, as long as you're now able to just communicate to your viewers to say, this is what you're looking at, and this is how you need to understand what you're looking at. So that that's just one thing that, you know, it's a, a bit more of an advanced technique to do something like this, because it genuinely does require a lot of thoughts into, you know, the types of perceptions that you're presenting and whether or not you're actually enabling people or disabling people by using this type of stuff. So that's all I'll say is just use sparsely, but understand that it's really a great concept that you can utilize in, in, in a lot of ways, like creating consistency. So I'm um, going back down here. Same thing applies. This is just a standard Tableau chart. And then we're just pulling in the shapes to show for the years. We use the shape marks here. And then we're assigning this. So here, again, just a regular view, circle, circle, writing in the labels with this. Same thing applies. So it's just, I guess, creatively using the Tableau layouts combined with the illustrator shapes. And then over here, we have individual pages where we're using dashboard actions to say, I already clicked that. <laughs> we're just adding dashboard actions to use the links to go around to allow people to visit and explore more about Sunny Street. Um, for the donation, it's a bit different. These two are just, you know, URL actions. This one is same, similar thing, but I used a menu select because I think it would be annoying for people to just click that and just have their email popping up all over the place. So, you know, that that's what these are. These are just dashboard actions. But in terms of the pages themselves, I keep clicking that. It's just literally the same idea of pulling in a shape and using it to represent that. And so you'll notice that, you know, for a lot of the people who have utilized these map layers, a lot of them are using custom shapes. And so that's where 
if we kind of go here, that's where I tell people it's like, the good thing about it is it gives you an opportunity to essentially explore other tools and design stuff there. The bad news is that you have to go and do that. So for someone who didn't intend to do that or who doesn't see value in that, then unfortunately, you know, you're not going to necessarily have that level of detail or control with your designs, but you can definitely like, you know, go ahead and use whatever pictures are available um, online. There's like lots of free resources, you know, Pexels, like lots of ping websites where you can literally just, if you wanted to do this and you don't feel like designing this, you're sharing, yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Yeah. If you if you don't want to design this, then you can just use other people's designs there. And you know, going back to the whole thing about like technical and design, I find that like design is really something that again, it's not a necessity by any means, right? Like, matter of fact, there are some people that don't believe you should be wasting time on design. I just think that it can really take things to a different space and it really helps you think deeper in a lot of things. So, you know, going back to the bit about patience, I'm going to backtrack a little bit here and just give a bit about the process and how I thought about showing this. So conceptually, sunny streets, they, they help vulnerable people. They help homeless people. And so, so when I think about stuff like that, I think no life, like there's not a lot of prospects for the future. So think like barren lands, like non living, right? So this here is supposed to be representative of like a rock, right? That's why I kind of use the gray. And so for these people, there's not a lot of prospects. There's not a lot of aspirations, but then what happens? Sunny street comes around. They're now having these conversations. They're having these consultations. Now people's lives begin to change. So, so what happens now out of the barren lands, we can now have life growing out, right? So that's why I chose to go ahead and use the stem. Now we have rocks, but then plants are growing out of rocks. That's not supposed to happen. That is supposed to be representative of the great impacts of Sunny Street. They are changing lives. And because we're using the size of these flowers to represent the number and the growth, you can now see that the more conversations are happening, the more life is growing out of these barren lands, the more, the more, the more future prospects are coming. And so it's all conceptual, like, you know, that's kind of the type of stuff that I think about when I'm visiting, you know, and that's sort of the whole idea with visualizing beauty, regardless of the subjects, right? Like, I just felt that that's just one of those cool things that I could just kind of display here. So, you know, there's that. And now, in terms of the impact, I really just thought that, you know, going deeper into looking at the kinds of gender, I would have liked to see a bit more here. But overall, I noticed that even for 2019, they had a longer period of time there, but still they were, there was a, 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 a larger amount of interactions for um, 2021. So that's one of the things where I really wanted to kind of, I wish I had shown better over here, but that was one of the trends that you notice is that 2020, 2021 was, you know, impactful there. Um, so moving away from that, if I can go back to the technical side of things, I'm just going to go in here. As far as the shapes go, um, what we're doing is from illustrator, we're just saying, grab this and export that selection. Like we're putting it into our Tableau repository, right? That, that's something that if we go here. You can find that by going into your documents and then my Tableau repository. You can create a new folder if you like to. I just put it in my proportions, right? So if I go select here and I go export, then it's going to put this thing in my Tableau repository. And that's where we're then able to just import it 
um, in here. So shapes, more shapes, we can see there, it's all here. So we're just picking and choosing like that. Now, in terms of these three over here, um, all of these layers are, are representative of everything here. So if we can start from, let's, let's start from the base here for the patient, um, lower circles, what we did is, I'll just show the calculations. Keep in mind, guys, that there's enough calculations here to make this considered like a small programming exercise. So please just understand that it, it does take a little bit of buildup to test out laying this out if you care about precision. So if we go edit, this one is not so crazy. It's very simple. If the row is equals to negative one, then make the point at here and then move it up a little bit, sorry, down a little bit. Same thing, row zero, move it down. This is row negative, this is, this is minus 0 0.1. So if you remember, we talked about the patient conversations, having a different size with everything. So you'll notice that I'm creating an exception for this particular thing everywhere. So this row here has its own thing, and this is actually row zero here. Now we have the points essentially there as well. We have this here being the final row where we're just adjusting it again. I, I wish that I could really verbalize what I'm trying to explain here, but the point is when you, okay, let me show you. If I were to go take this away and I just go apply. What you'll notice is that this is interfering, it's intruding upon these other things. And that's not the end of the world, but at the end of the day, people have to understand what they're looking at. And so if they're seeing this over here at the bottom, they're seeing this at the bottom, and this is at the top, well, that doesn't make sense for them. So then now we have to go ahead and interfere with that by saying, no, 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 bring this actually a lot lower for us. And so going from the zero, zero, we can say minus that 0 0.65, and it's gonna pull it down a little bit. And now we see it's back here. So how I do the calculations and you know modifications, I test it out in like 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, just to kind of see up and down how it's looking. And then once you get to a certain point, you may end up having to half that and say 0 0.05. And so, again, going back to the whole concept, there has to be lots of testing and experimentation being done. And then we're just using the size of the values to essentially size those circles so that people can see like the actual sequence of things there. And then going over to these bands, this is here, I'll show you this formula, edit, it's another simpler formula. Um, if the row is equal to minus 0 0.1, so if we're looking at the patient conversations, then make row, row column minus 0 0.9. So this comes down a little bit more. This comes down a little bit, and then this comes down just a little bit. So again, it's all relative to the positioning. This is where I can't really speak too much to why this is like this, because when you're laying out starting from a zero, zero, then you're going to be the best visual judge of how much to the left should you move, how much to the right should you move, how high or high low should you move. So um, again, hopefully in a blog where there's like words to read over, it might, you might be able to kind of, you know, check this out a bit deeper. Um, the, the symbols are basically just done using a, a calculation. You can see here type. So for that, we basically just said, if the dimension is in any of these, then it's a consultation. If it's in any of these, it's a com it's a, a metric, else it's a conversation. And the foundation for this is based on the information that we were provided by Sunny Streets. They gave us a nice like data dictionary that we were able to use to understand what was going on in the data. And so I just took all of that and then I grabbed this into a formula. I like the in function. It's really a great thing that I think Tableau did recently because if not for this, you can bet this formula would be like 
much, much, much longer. So there's that. Um, and then for the stem, that's another fairly simple calculation. It's basically if the row is in patient conversations, then keep it here. If it's in here, then put it here. Again, um, this one doesn't represent anything size-wise. It's just basically like a connector there, like the stem connecting the flowers to the stone. Um, then now we're going to get into the more complicated stuff for these because we can see there's like three different levels being attached to this thing. So this is one where it took the longest amount of time because based on a lot of the sizing, a lot of the proportions, we're having to consider now not only the size of this, but the size of the individual values as well. So if we go here, All right, so you can see now this one is a little bit different in how it's laid out. So there's just a lot more going on. And now just kind of go through it and break down the logic of what's happening. If the row is negative 0.1. So if we're looking at the patient conversations and the year is 2019, then make the points at the row minus negative 0 0.15 and column minus negative 0 0.15. So again, you can see here with these numbers, this just lets you know the amount of iterations that it actually took to determine what is the best placement. And so again, patience, patience, and patience, right? If we're looking at 2020, same thing, if the row is for patient conversations and the year is 2020, then make that point at the row at row plus 0 0.1. So we're now moving it upwards and then column plus 0 0.06, moving it a little bit. The whole idea is that you wanna create visual symmetry. Like if I had left things the way they are, then this 2020 would kind of overshadow everything. So this is literally just fine tuning um what the viz is now what you could do potentially is like you can just leave it at the row and column initially and then come back later on to fine tune it i just found it difficult to do that so i spent a lot of time here doing this and it really again this is just based on let me go here. It's based on this, like this, this simple calculation, make point zero, zero. This is really like what helped me understand how to play around with this. So I'll just create this calculation here. And then to create the layers, you're just really grabbing it and then dropping it there. You can see here, it's right like this, zero, zero, right? Obviously we have the map layers, but we can go ahead and say map layers and we just uncheck everything. That's what leaves us with the viz basically. So as we have this zero, zero, I want to kind of demonstrate how we're moving around with the grid. So let's say we go and edit that calculation to say, make the point at one zero. We go apply. So just look at where it's gonna move to. Okay, this is not a good example because there's only one thing here we're looking at. But basically the whole idea is that starting from zero zero, just naturally thinking about it, this is like X, Y, zero, zero is your center. If you wanna go up, then you're just going this way. You wanna go down, then it's minus this way. And then for the columns, right? You're just moving minus plus, right? So hopefully that makes sense, but that's really what we're utilizing is we're just 
using relative positioning. That's what it is, relative positioning. So relative to zero, zero, where should Tableau place this object, right? So we're gonna put here, so we can go zero, zero minus whatever value to take us here, plus whatever value to take us here on, 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 on there. Uh, for the columns, plus is this way, minus is that way, there. So that's really what, what this kind of comes around with, is being able to play around and see um, how those things are, are, are laid out there. And then um, in terms of the shapes themselves, um, speaking a little bit about the design, I, I I'll just kind of backtrack a little bit and show you something. So this was like initially what I had planned to do, right? Where I was just going to use and show everything at the month level. So this would have involved assigning an individual shape for each month in Tableau. Um, but then I just noticed that when you actually place the values and it sizes it properly, it actually became a lot harder to view the trends within the data. And so that was where I reverted and I said, okay, let's just use whole flowers instead. And, you know, speaking now specifically about these shapes here, um, if you do want to learn how to do stuff like this, what I did is, I took a course. Okay. <laughs> I started a course, I should say. Um, I believe in, 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 I'm not going to hesitate to pay for a course is what I'm trying to say. So this is like a $25 course. Um, I took it like up to 11% and then I kind of just got crazy and I just went and started exploring. So I definitely should probably come back and watch this properly, but essentially if you want an excuse to learn like illustrator or some other tool, you can, there are free resources. Like if you go to like Adobe creative cloud, for example, um, and, and if you go to, you know, creative cloud, you, you have some free tutorials there where I would really recommend, um, you know, you, you need to have the product. You can download creative cloud for free on the, on the Adobe website. But this is one that I think if you want to kind of learn how to work with shapes and start to develop that type of stuff, this is a good one that you might want to look into. Um, it just gives you a good background. And then of course, for like the layouts and things like that, this is another one that you might want to look into. If you, you know, want to pay for a course, this same course here, this man, he's really great. He's got something else on Udemy, you know, it's 20 bucks there. So, you know, I've always just believed that sometimes you have to pay for value, but if you don't want to, you know, I, I don't think you have to. Um, but I personally just, like I said, going back to the whole concept of like design and, and, and technical, I just wanted to be able to learn that. And, you know, for something like this, you know, going back to the message on patience, the truth of the matter is what we're looking at here is literally um, we expand this. Oh, sorry, it's already opened up. So these are like individual petals. Okay. It was set up initially like this, and then we're using, so we have this as a, as the object. And then this is like the radar chart tool in, in illustrator the radar graph tool. And then I essentially had to place everything one by one using this grid. But realistically speaking, you know, we can do that in a separate way. Go here and you can essentially, I get this out of here. Let's give you a second, please. Mm, this is difficult. Okay, so 
we're going to do this object pattern or repeat radial. And that's going to give us like some repetitive stuff here. And then we can go into properties and change this. We needed like 21 pedals. All right now it does this, and then you can kind of shrink there a bit. Whoop. A little bit. Oh, there. And then, you know. All right, so something simple like that. That's that's how you can do something like this. So and I just, just wanted to do that to show you that, you know, if you do have some kind of ideas and things that you want to play with, definitely go ahead and do that stuff in Illustrator, play around with that. You can literally use Figma for the same thing. But I just found that, you know, in really getting to display what I wanted to display here, um, that's what I did there. And so going back into Tableau, if we want to talk about the other, you know, building of the layout, so we can see here for the programs in this section, for the grids for this one, it was basically similar to how we started the layout for the initial one, where we have this, 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 but it's essentially using this calculation to start off and see where the placements are, and then use that to go into this place and then using the same um, calculation for the um, flowers to do the layout for, for, for here as well. So if we can click on this one here, we'll see it's the same program, the same point that we're using. So if the program is Gold Coast, then make the points at negative instead of starting from zero for this one i kind of just played around a bit again a lot of this is really experimental so you know there is really no formula that that i can give there but same idea is like once you kind of have the view relative in your mind you're just kind of moving things around and so this is just being used like if we go okay we go if we go let me let me just let me just do this in real time so if you remember, we made this formula for the program, meaning this would be zero and then whatever number here, zero, whatever number there, zero, whatever number there. So if we can go back to the beginning, I'm just gonna go back to the beginning to show you what, what the initial starting point would have been if we said, just make the point at zero and whatever it is. Because that, that usually is where sometimes you have to stop for developing this. But if we just say make point at this and this, then what happens is that, right? So it's cool. This actually still kind of shows things in an interesting way, but it doesn't match up to the other one. So that's where we're now having to then play around. So I want this to move down. So let's just say we experiment with minus 0.5 and we go apply. Okay, now it's moved around for Gold Coast, but it's not quite where we want it to be. So we can go again, two, five. All right, it's moved again. So like you, you, you know, you have to actually all right, I'll show you. Let's try move the columns again. So I'm trying to move the column this way. Sorry. All right, so you see it's shifted too far to the right, right? We can try this again. Let's say it's 0 0.25. Now it's, you know, again. So that, that's really what it is here. You're kind of just playing around with the positioning. And I'm gonna just like control Z, control Z to get it back to what we had before. There. And then of course, same thing applies. We're just using the, you know, values to sort of lay out um, things here. Actually, a, a little word about this. So, you know, obviously to get this how it is, we first have to pivot. I'm sure we all hopefully know what that is, you know, pivoting in Tableau. 
So I had to pivot the measures in the data source so that we can put them all into one column. And that's one of the key things too that really helped with um, laying things out there. So we have all the dimensions I kind of just, you know, did here. So if we go, you can see I can remove that pivot there. I'm not going to do that because that's going to break our viz, but that's actually something I should have mentioned at the beginning is these measures, they came individually, but I had to pivot them so that we can have them in a way that allows us to do what we needed to do there. Um, so I'm just going to go back to the dashboard. There. And then same thing applies with these bands. They're, they're, they're essentially set up in the same way as the other one. So if you click here, um, band plus label, collect point program. So if you're digging in the viz, I've tried to name these in a way that allows you to um, know what's being referred to. So I guess if you are digging into this later, if you click here, it's going to jump to the particular layer. And then when you look at the collect, the collect just tells you what calculation is used to generate that. So if I click here, this tells me this layer. If I click here, it tells me it's this layer and I know this calculation is here. If I click here, it jumps here and I know this calculation is here. So for example, point program copy copy, let's open that and see what's in there. Right, you notice it's very similar to the other calculation for the flowers, where instead of using the years to lay it out, we're now using the you know program. So we're saying if the program is Gold Coast and the year of the activity date is 2019, then make the point at you know zero and then program, which is basically that number that we've created based on this calculation. So that number is assigned to, excuse me, whatever number is assigned to Gold Coast, we're doing that, but then we're just shifting it. And again, all these shifts and, you know, positions is all just making things so that it's easy to view relatively. Um, so same thing applies here. If the program is Gold Coast and the year is 2019, make the point at zero and then that number and shift it a little bit. Obviously for these ones, there's no data. So ignore that. Sunshine Coast is where you see a lot of the information sitting there. And again, these numbers, I, I, I don't know how to stress that. There's no logical pattern to them. It's, it's honestly just like experimenting and experimenting and experimenting. So that that's really, I think, what it boils down to for this type of stuff is a bit of patience, like a bit of playing around with things and just kind of seeing how like the layout presents itself to you. And so try to try to play around with this. Like I, I really, I really wish that there was there was a better way to explain this for you. But essentially what you're just thinking about it relative positioning. You're moving up. Are you moving left? Are you moving right? Or like you're moving down, you know, in order to like place these according to how they need to be placed. And of course, you know, you can see like the hover stuff is going on. One thing worth mentioning is that, you know, I thought it made sense to layer the years in, in the proper order so that you'll notice that the 2021 flower actually covers it overlaps all of them. The 2021 covers the 2019 one and the 2019 one is really at the bottom. So, you know, it gives like a realistic effect in terms of showing the order of things. So that way you can grasp not only the values, but also the sequence in which things are happening. I don't know if that's relevant or not, you know, and then I guess just a word about this is the same thing, just grabbing the values and then just placing them into, you know, labels and just kind of making them laid out in an interesting way. So I think that what's going on here? Sorry. 
Okay. So yeah, so that 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 pretty much I think covers a lot or most of how this was was laid out. I think I want to stop here and kind of get a sense of like, does anyone have any questions? Is this stuff making sense at all? Um, I don't. I don't know if I'm doing a great job of explaining this. Hey, Chindi, I think you're doing a great job. I, I I feel I should not stop you, and you should go on, right? And we can see the same in the comments also in terms of the feedback everyone is giving to prepare. Okay. Thank I you. Thank you for the... going. Sorry, say that again, please. You can just see that. I was saying that you can see the feedback in the chat. Oh, chat. Let me open the chat. Then. Oh, awesome. Okay. Ah, thank you. I, I didn't realize that I can. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, 1 point. Okay. Questions. What is, let me, let me, let me take a peek and see questions. What is 1.2 or negative 0.1? Okay. Let me, let me go back in there. So let's use. Okay. Let me use this 1 since it's nice and big. Here. So these 1.2 or negative 0.1, um, it goes back to here. So I created these values arbitrarily. Um, it originally, like if you're using any calculation type stuff in Tableau, it's going to give you whole numbers. So essentially, the way to think about this is 0, 1, and 2. But what I've done is I said, using that logic, let us recreate our own points, row and column system. So for the rows, I said, yeah, this is row zero. But then instead of going to row one, I said it's row one, but then take it down a little bit. So give it a little bit more space. So we're just adding a padding of 0 0.2 manually into the view same thing like over here instead of leaving it at row two i'm saying add an additional padding of 0 0.2 so we're just widening the grid right so let's say this is zero one and two we're just saying no give it at zero one and two so that there's more space for us to work with so it's literally just at extra padding and then for this one, this was just because the patient conversations, it needed a little bit more space. So rather than starting at point zero, I said that we should essentially um, move it a little bit uh, lower so that it has a bit more space to breathe as having a larger circle there. Um, hopefully, does that make sense for that one? Hopefully it does. Um, Square, the just to be HMD, sorry, uh, just to be cautious of time, I think we are already uh, over time now. I have just one question for you. Yep. Do you want to talk about your journey of Tableau, right? And if you want to give advice for someone who is just starting with Tableau, what will be your advice to them? Um, yeah, my journey is 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 I started posting last year um around I think June and then August I started makeover Monday so I think if you do the calculation it's like 15 months now and I have over 80 visits and that is basically the summary of my journey there and the tip that I have for you is Consistency, at least at the beginning, is really what you need, right? Keep in mind that I'd already been doing analysis and all this type of stuff, so it, it really wasn't the beginning of that. But the tool itself, right, in that short amount of time, is just a consistent posting and doing that I felt personally helped me. And it's something that I think that you're going to have to do if you really want to be passionate about getting into something new. Um, and the impact of that, I think there's a lot of positive feedback from the community where, you know, in that span of time, like, you know, Tableau featured author, public ambassador, um, three time VOTD. 
Ion Viz finishes, like lots of lots of positive feedbacks and 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 you know um communication around that work there. So I just think that inspiring, uh, looking to the community for inspiration, getting involved as much as you can, allowing that feedback to flow into your work and actually like applying that feedback really is something that you you should consider doing if you want to have, you know, like a lot of good results. And for me personally, um, I've never actually been hired specifically to do Tableau. I just find ways to like sneak it in, right? For example, I may do analysis in Tableau, but you know, my boss is gonna say, I, I want the Excel spreadsheet. And I'm still gonna give him the Excel spreadsheet, but I, I can still do the analysis on my own in Tableau because, you know, I've been working in a lot of places as like a contractor, full-time contractor. So you get to choose your own tools for the most part. So creating your own journey is something that you don't have to say, well, I don't have the opportunity here. I don't have the opportunity there. There's lots of ways that you can still create that experience for yourself. And so again, the data fam is really one way to kind of like get really inspired in terms of looking for the consistency because you're never really gonna feel motivated on your own. But when you see other people getting into that, you kind of see their own growth. You will be inspired to focus on your own growth in that way. And you will find other people are also inspired by your own growth. So it's just like a really, it's like a synergistic effect. You know, trying to do this on your own is really not the way. Like you will lose steam. You're gonna not really get into it. So that's what I'll say in terms of getting yourself up to up to par, if that's what you want. Thank you, Jim. And I think Emmanuel has posted one interesting question, and he's asking, how do you differentiate between inspiration and copying? And, and just to add my word over here, for me, if someone is going ahead and copying something by giving a shout out to them, this is the first step to innovation, right? And, and this is something in Tableau Public you can go ahead and do. You can just go ahead, download someone this, always remember to give them a shout out, but learn from them in terms of what they have done and how we can go ahead and improve our craft. What what is your what is your thought on this particular statement over here? Um, that's like I think you you hit it right on the on the head, Sagar. Is it's really go into there and unpack the workbook, download it, and that's one thing I say. You know, like get in there, download it. Honestly, if you don't understand something, message them like that. That's you'll be surprised at how willing and helpful people are in the community. What you don't want to do is just take someone's work and try to do it and pass it off as your own. Like, I remember the first time that happened to me, I don't even know how I felt, but it was like seriously violating. I was just like, whoa, I didn't say anything about it, but you want to really keep that in mind when you're going into people's work is that consider how they would feel and how you would feel if someone did what you're about to do to someone else. So. Again, the reason we make the workbooks available is so that you can go and learn from them. But you definitely want to understand that that's what you should be trying to do is to learn and not copy. Because copying, you're really not benefiting yourself, right? If it comes down to someone asking you to replicate that, then what are you going to do, right? You're not going to be able to do that. And I don't think we would want to put ourselves in that situation. So, yeah, that, that's what I say is download it, look into it. Shout them out, you know what I mean? Like, let them know that they've helped you so that they inspire to continue to do what they do. Thank you, Jim D. I think, thank, first of all, thank you for your passion in Tableau, right? I, I can see how you have gone ahead, taken this place, and we are all looking for that blog post, right? So that we can go ahead and learn more about the list which you have created. I'll do my best for that one. Um, again, it's my, gonna probably be my first one. So, is it gonna be good? I don't know. Probably not. But I'm gonna hear your feedback, and I'm gonna do another one. Would that one be good? Probably not. But it'll be better than the first one. So, I'm gonna just try my best for you all. Thank you, Chimdi. I think with that, uh, Chimdi, it is always an honor to have you on this connect. I think earlier you came as a public public featured author. Now you are going ahead and talking about your passion and what you have gone ahead and improve your craft in the tool, right? You have shared how 
in 15 months, you were able to go ahead and get uh, this of the day, a six times or seven times you mentioned over here, right? You were able to go ahead and you were among top 10 best business in I and West, right? I think that is something inspiration for everyone. We can go ahead and take it from you and improve our craft over here. So thank you for coming and presenting in this connect. Uh, so I'm very happy. Thanks for having me. Um, and I hope this was useful. If there's like any thoughts or anything that you wanted to clarify, please just hit me up on Twitter. And I'm always happy to talk about anything Tableau and non Tableau. Awesome. I think go ahead, reach out to Chimdi on LinkedIn or Twitter as you said that. And if 